from September last year to September this year, I have been hospitalized for a total of eight months. So when you think of the calendar period, September 18 to September 19, at various times, a combined total of eight months on hospital admission. It coincided with all the times that I would have loved to be here. The January conference, a council meeting, and in this combined period of eight months, I underwent three surgical. In fact, I have lost count of the number of surgeries that I have had. Maybe five or six on my spine, and uh, four or five. I came to the realization of the fact that if our lives were in our own hands, we would have lost them completely. Our lives are not in our hands. They are in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. I rather want to give a testimony followed by a few remarks. In that course of time, um, the Lord did very, very many things. And I realized that if it were not for his doing, I wouldn't have been here. The first was a surgery on my hip. I realized that I could not stand and stretch as before. And the doctor said, oh, uh, there was some element of calcification in my hip joints. So they needed to scrape the extra bone formation from there so I could be flexible enough to stand. I woke up in an intensive care unit. Said, what has brought me here? And they said, you lost a lot of blood, too much blood. Your HB has dropped to 4.8. For those of you who know much about these things, and they said, when it drops up to five, you should have instant or urgent blood transfusion. And so they said, well, we need to give you blood, but we need your opinion. So in our part of the world, you can ask the doctors all kinds of questions. And so I asked, what are the risks involved? So the doctor brought me uh, some papers, and the benefits were four lines, and the risks were two pages. Yeah, risk of this, and risk of that, and risk of that. So after having read them, I asked the doctor, if this is the case with blood transfusion, that who should have blood transfusion then? Then he said, those who have no choice. I said, okay. So if I have a choice, and having read all these dangers, please, let's wait until tomorrow morning the gentleman looked at me with the corner of his eye. He said, your body parts have only 33% of the blood they need. And really, I felt the symptoms. Pullings on, uh, on my eyes and my fingertips, my extremities. So, 
I called my wife and said, Lady, this is what the doctors have said. Tell the children and let's pray. So, by the next morning, anyway, I asked the doctors, is there anything else that could be done apart from blood transfer? No medication? I so, said, well, the best medication will begin experiencing the effects after three months. But you need it now. By the next morning, the blood had beefed up to 5.2. And, uh, but they still said, it's dangerous. I said, okay, then let's wait up to the evening. We waited and it dropped to 4.9. So I had, to t I had to tell them, you see, I'm not against blood transfusion. Then I said, okay, then let's wait to the evening. When evening time came and they checked, it had risen to 5.4. And the next day, 5.8, the next, 6.4, 8.4. And one of the doctors said, you have more blood than I. And when I was leaving hospital, up to 13. So they looked at me and said, you, what kind of man are you? But it wasn't the end of it. You see, over that short period of time, I felt as though my life was being wrestled from me. But I also knew, miraculously, the Lord had given me a very strange, unusual revelation of himself, which I had never seen or known. I went to the, uh, to the theater for this urology test on my bladder. When I recovered, there was a nurse standing beside me with a very somber face. She said, Doctor, to me there was a problem. What is it? You have a tumor in your bladder. Tumor? What kind of tumor? Well, it could be a cancer or something else. But the doctors would like to meet you in their office. So I went there, they slotted a DVD into their computer and showed me, this is your bladder, this is the tumor, and one of them said, it's called the most expensive tumor. Because if you try to pull it out, it, it will grow from another side. So they will keep pulling and pulling until eventually you die or something else. So, we want to refer you to a bigger facility for you to undergo a surgery. They will pull off the tumor and uh, send it to the pathologist who will examine it between three and five days. And then we know whether it's a cancer. If so, what kind? If not, what it is. So, uh, you can just imagine the emotional feelings. Do you know what to say? Uh, do you say that uh, the tumor was not cancerous? He said, please understand me. I'm saying that when we got in the bladder, there was no tumor to be found. So, 
there was no surgery performed. I, I said, um, in fact, the guy had to be a bit patient with me until the reality sunk that when they got in there, there was no tumor at all. There was nothing in my bladder. However, because they had gone in, they had to scrape a little of the tissue, perform a biopsy, send it to the pathologist, let him study to see if anywhere in my bladder there was a tumor or not. I mean, there was anything cancerous. And brothers and sisters, these were top urologists. So I asked myself, was it that they didn't see or they didn't look well that they said there was a tumor? But how could this be? These were two top urologists. They made a DVD of the whole thing. They showed me this is that, this is that, this is that. So, the assumption that there was no tumor did not apply. And our conclusion, as you all accept with me, was that the Lord handled it miraculously. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I returned to my usual hospital, everybody expected me to tell them about uh, my encounter at the other side and what kind of tumor it was. So, when I went for physiotherapy, I would just be conversing and conversing, and the people would be, I mean, they looked at me to see whether I was downcast or what it, then they would break and say but look to me what was the result from the pathologist about the tumor I said, oh there was no tumor and this opened the way for me to testify to my nurses my therapists and others 